Buckle up, friends, and welcome to the Thriving Alcohol-Free Podcast. I'm your host, Deb, otherwise known as Mocktail Mom, a retired wine drinker that finally got sick and tired of spinning on life's broken record called Detox to Retox. Let this podcast be an encouragement to you if alcohol is maybe a form of self-care for you, or you find yourself dragging through the day waiting to pour another glass. I am excited to share with you the fun of discovering new things to drink when you aren't drinking and the joy of waking up each day without a hangover. It is an honor to serve as your sober fun guide. So sit back and relax or keep doing whatever it is you're doing. This show is produced for you with love from the great state of Kentucky. Thanks so much for being here and big time cheers. Okay, super excited. Welcome, you guys, to Thriving Alcohol Free with Mocktail Mom. I am Deb. I'm your host, and I am so excited for my guest today. I feel like I feel like she needs no introduction because if you follow me on Instagram, you know her because we have partnered together for many, many different opportunities, <laughs> and we've had so much fun together encouraging and supporting those of you who are sober curious or gray area drinkers or just in the space of, you know, thinking about evaluating your relationship with alcohol. So, Jen Butler, my guest today. I feel like I need like clapping, I, Yay, <laughs> clapping and cheering. Jen I just want Butler to reach through the, house. the screen and give you the biggest hug, Deb. I love you so much. <laughs> I'm so happy you're oh, here. I cannot for wait for my audience to get to know you, yes. you, 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 and to hear your story. So thank you for being on today, my friend. Thank you, my friend. It's so good to see your face and to be talking to you yes. in real time. I love I it. I know. I know. It's been crazy. You and I have been like, we've been on the wild <laughs> ride together. So yes, okay, so for anybody who doesn't know, Jen um, and I have done, we did three months together, mm-hmm. three different separate opportunities for people. Um, we did what was our first one, Dry July. Mm-hmm. We did, yep. we offered a Dry July program. You are you are the sober coach. So I'm so excited for you to be on today and share some of your tips and tricks yes. and encouragement. Uh, we did a Dry July program where I did the mocktails, you did the sober coaching, yep. which you're amazing, amazing. Wow. We also did, what we do? We did Sober October, mm-hmm. so we did a second month, and then we did Dry January. Uh, January. Yeah. January, which was phenomenal. Yes, and so, and the groups that came out of those programs, know. you know, the bonds that formed between people, wasn't that the most amazing thing to witness? That was, oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. The connections that mm-hmm. um, the women made, because it, we focus on women, and the, the connections that the other women made with one another yep. to encourage each other on their journeys has been the biggest Incredible. blessing. And I think beyond that, anything yeah. you or I could have expected okay. or even hoped for. Totally oh. agree. Totally agree. Actually, one gal, um, and she's been she's been a podcast guest, Jennifer. Yes, she, a different Jennifer. She is coming up on six months, April first. Oh, that is so cool. Yes, oh. and she did the program with us. Yes. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so awesome. Okay, tell everybody about yourself. <laughs> I want everybody to know who you are, and um, yeah, just I want to just open it up for you to share a little bit, if you don't mind. I'm, of course, it's probably like the worst podcast question ever. Tell me about oh, yourself. Stop. You know me. I'm an open book. <laughs> I'm always happy to share my story. So yes. I am Jen Butler. I am currently a life and sobriety coach. I am also a mom to two children and three dogs, and I am a mm-hmm. wife. I live in Westchester County, New York, so we're just north of New York City, and. Before becoming a life and sobriety coach, I was a gray area drinker. And that's really Mm. what ultimately got me to this point. Um, I really was stuck for several years in gray area drinking. And I can can kind of go back through my story. But um, Mm. I, when I finally emerged from the fog of my gray area drinking, I really wanted to help other women because I felt so alone, as I know you did, Deb, like felt Absolutely. so alone in my struggle, felt like, why am I the only one that can't get it together? Everyone else can drink like a normal person, and I'm over here with no off switch and can't stop at one glass of wine and can't go more than two days without drinking. What is my problem? Um, once I realized it's not mm. me, it's alcohol, and once I realized... Mm alcohol was no longer for me, I really wanted to do whatever I could to help other women in a similar mm-hmm. position. And so I, during mm-hmm. the pandemic, I, I did a court, excuse me, coaching certification and uh, okay. I've been coaching since then. And it is just, it is my calling. It is the greatest mm-hmm. work I've ever done. And it is so, mm-hmm. as I know, you know about your work in this space, it is so fulfilling. It is absolutely cup filling work. Agree. Agree, agree. And you're a phenomenal 
phenomenal no, coach. You're you. so good at really digging in with people, yeah. helping them kind of peel back the, I mean, I've watched, I've witnessed yes, it. Yes, you, you know, have. We have yeah. group coaching. I've witnessed it and it's so great. Okay, explain, can you define a gray area drinker? Because I think mm-hmm. so, I still am like, oh, gray area. I know mm-hmm. I was a gray area mm-hmm. drinker. What, you know, if somebody doesn't know what that is, because I think a lot of us women fall in that category. Yes, we don't even sure. know what that is. For sure. So what's gray area yep. drinking? So gray area drinking is the space between take it or leave it drinking and what I call, you know, capital P problem drinking. Yeah. So it's the space between someone whose relationship with alcohol is not complicated. They can have a drink or not. It's just, it's not a, not a, not a thing. And then there are people who unfortunately need professional help in order to get better and to overcome their addiction. The gray area is all the rest of us in between. And wow. there are so many of us. And, you know, I, I like to say some of us are closer to like the charcoal gray and some of us are <laughs> almost a white. You, you almost can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. Right? It's that's a spectrum. So true. Even within the gray area, it's a spectrum. That's so true. But, but it's really those of us who don't have an off switch or who have to use all of our perceived willpower. Mm-hmm. And I say perceived willpower because willpower is a perception to, to hit mm-hmm. that off switch and to stop you know, once we have that first yeah. glass, we just want to keep going. That's the gray yeah. area. And it's yeah. a very yeah. difficult um, drinking habit to break because you don't present as having a problem. No one ever told me yeah. I had a problem. No one ever, yeah. I, I never had an intervention. No one ever sat me down to really? talk about my drinking. Okay. Um, and so it can be just so easy to say, well, I'm, I'm not as bad as that person, so I must be fine, you know? And, and okay. that's the way we kind of deny it until we stop denying it. Yeah. And sometimes I think other people don't even know. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't think people, people don't know like that head space of like you're thinking about it or which I think comes with gray area drinking. Yes. And I went from, you know, being a take it or leave it. I think many of us, right? Like take it or leave it. Like there were years where like, I didn't care about wine. I didn't think about it. And then you get into whatever, for whatever reason you fall into that category. You don't, and it's like, what is going Mm -hmm. on? Why, why is the off switch no longer working? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. have one, it turns into two, turns into three, turns into like, oh my gosh, well, the bottle's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Did it oh, again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did it again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think so. So for you, like nobody noticed. It wasn't like somebody was like, oh, Jen, I think, you know, no. you're drinking more. That, you yeah, know, nobody I definitely noticed. had my nights where I was way sure. overboard, um, sure. but not, not to the extent that it ever necessitated any kind of serious conversation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Same. But Same. I knew, yeah. I knew. But I knew. Same. And I knew. it was one thing when I was yeah. in my early 20s and we went out for our margarita Mondays and then ran six miles around Central Park the next morning and it was all fine. Oh but, my gosh. you know, it was another thing when I have two kids and I come yeah. home at night and I fall up the stairs, you know, while my babies are sleeping. Yeah. And it's like, nah, okay, this is no yeah. longer okay with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You feel like it was affecting your parenting, your your mothering? For sure. Which is the yeah. crazy thing, right? Yeah. Because wine mom culture tells us that we need wine to survive parenthood, that we need it to help us, that it's a tool. Mm. When actually, mm. it, it made everything worse, for sure. Oh, you know, it yeah. made my yeah. my well of patience was very, very shallow when I when yeah. I was drinking. And once I stopped, I it was it was a real light bulb moment, like, oh. I'm I'm not snapping mm. at my kids, you know, or like mm. I'm actually enjoying reading at night with my kids. I'm not skipping pages to to get through the book faster so I can go back to my wine. Isn't that amazing? Okay, uh, so interesting. You said that the well of your well of patience, yeah. you know, because like like you said, like I think we we're fed that lie, like oh you need it, like you've had a hard day with the kids or mm-hmm. had a hard day at work, come home and you know have a glass of wine or have you know whatever, and it does it ruin the 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 well of patience gets very, very, very shallow. Yes. And I thought the exact opposite. I thought yep, like, same. well, if I stop drinking, like how I mother, how I parent, mm-hmm. how I chillax, mm-hmm. how I've, t- but it's like, it does, it frees up. Like now you're reading to your kids at night and you're not thinking, okay, how many pages left in this book? Yeah. Like, what did you I say? Like you pages. skip pages? Yeah. Skip pages. Or summarize. Oh, I would sorry. just summarize. Yeah. <laughs> kids, tonight I'm giving you the Cliff's Notes yeah. version of, <laughs> exactly. you know, of the little engine that could. Exactly. We're not going to read the whole thing. It's kind of long and I got to go. <laughs> I have a bottle of wine chilling for me. Yeah. I have things to do. No, it is so, it, it's so 
counter of what our brain has been mm-hmm. telling us when you're stuck in that. Because mm-hmm. your brain is telling you like, no, you have to have this to relax. Yep. You have to have this to, to parent. Yep. So When actually, you know, it's the wine that puts us into fight or flight. It, the wine, mm. literally the way it interacts with our brain, and I had no idea about this before I became a coach, okay. um, because okay. no one tells you this stuff, right? But but now I know that that when you ingest yeah. alcohol, the way that it interacts with our brain, it actually causes us to be more short-tempered and to not be able to make decisions in a balanced way. Mm. And that's why we— lose our patience so much quicker. And listen, that is not to say that I do not still lose my patience with my children. Of course. I of absolutely course. do. Yes. I absolutely yes. We're still do. human. Yes. We're just sober yes. humans. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just, but the, the it's degree true. to which I started enjoying them more mm-hmm. from my oh. very first break, from my dry really? January 2018, within days, I was finding that mm-hmm. I was enjoying parenting more. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. So you took a break back in 2018 mm-hmm. and then, t- yeah, tell tell me about your, your like, your history of yep. taking breaks. Like, did you take a break and then that was it forever or oh, no? No, just like you, Deb. No, definitely yeah. not. I definitely know. not. Yes. So, yes, we've had some, yeah, had some trials. <laughs> I had some trial runs indeed, before. Indeed. It really stuck. Yeah. Um, so another another characteristic of gray area drinkers and something that, that was definitely my experience is that gray area drinkers tend to not hit rock bottom, luckily. Luckily mm. for us, right? Um, yeah. So I never yeah. had a rock bottom moment, but I had several what I refer to as soft rock bottom moments. So you know, Celine mm. Dion, not Courtney Love, like just soft rock bottom. <laughs> Celine Dion, she's my favorite. <laughs> I love her. I've been to her concerts. Oh my yes. gosh, that's a, that's just a dream. That's a dream. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So there were just I got to a point where I had had enough nights of you know, as I said, tripping up the stairs or. Yeah. Yeah. Getting getting sick didn't happen a lot, but it happened enough that I yeah. got to a point where I knew that something needed to change. I didn't tell mm. anyone in my life that I was going to commit to dry January. I only told wow. a group of anonymous women online who found themselves by the hashtag Sober Sisters. I reached out online anonymously and said, I think I need help. I'm going to do dry January. I don't think I can do it. So if you have any advice for me, I'll take it. And these wow. women, most of whom I still, to this day, I don't know who they are, reached out Aww. with suggestions, recommendations, and support. And wow. now, as a coach, I can look back at that time and think, they were my coach. They Aww. they helped empower me to get through that mm. first break. And it was incredible. And I made it. I got through dry January. And wow. I was committed to moderating because I still could not imagine my life without alcohol. So I thought, yep. oh, this is great. I feel amazing. Now I can drink like a normal person. Normal and I'm person. putting that in air quotes, say that. right? I knew, okay, air quotes, yes, a normal um, person, yeah. But of course, you know, once I started again, I just kind of went right back to where I had been. And so I took another break. That break lasted about, um, I think about 75 days. Okay. And then again, I wanted to try to moderate. I tried to moderate again. Again, my my drinking habits went right back to where they close to where they had been, close okay. enough that I thought this yeah. is just not this is just not working mm. for me, and I started getting a, a a gut feeling that I needed to take a year off. That was my next step, and as really? much as it scared me to commit to okay. a full year, I was more excited for it than mm. I was scared, and oh, that's wow. how I knew it was wow. the right thing. And so I committed to that July 5th, 2018 was my day one, and I never went back. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So for anyone who is thinking, you know, I I just can't do it, or I've stopped and started so many times, it'll never stick, that's just not true. Yeah. You know, it will stick. You have to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And if it hasn't, and you want to give it a try again? Give it a try, it a try again. again. Yeah. yeah. I was the exact same way in the sense, I don't remember the exact dates of like when I did little breaks, mm-hmm. but my goal was when I, my goal when I did my breaks, even when I started this break, mm-hmm. which I'm still on mm-hmm. two plus years in, I'm not giving up now. Um, but it was, my goal was to be able to moderate. Yes. I think, I think that's, uh, would you say that's like for most of your coaching clients, do you feel like that's kind of how they come into it? Like, um, yes. I, and I, I work with people who are determined to moderate and we, we work through that. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and they either keep after that, or they get to a point where they decide, actually, you know what, this is it's too much work. 
Which, and that's the point mm. that I got to. I think you did too, right? Like, same. It's just, I was like, you know, I have my list of non negotiables. I have my plan. I have my, and it just felt like so much work for very little benefit. Because the more I true. learned about alcohol and how it impacts our brains and our bodies, the less I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Because once you yeah. know that stuff, you can't unknow it. You can't unknow it. You can't unknow it. No. And right, all those rules, all those like those list of non negotiables mm-hmm. became very negotiable when it was a hard, like when it was like, okay, now I'm only going to have wine on Fridays and Saturday nights, mm-hmm. you know, and I won't have more than two glasses. Well, then when Wednesday was really hard or, you know, whatever, it was like, okay, well, just tonight. Yes. You know, it's always exactly. breaking. I was always breaking those promises to yes. myself, you know, or I'm just, or, or the promise, you know, the everyday promise of I'm just going to have one. Yes. Yes. And that feels <laughs> right? terrible. And you wake up and you feel, it feels ter- It feels terrible to look your yourself in the mirror and no, I, I haven't, I'm not being truthful to myself. Yes, and you know? I can't I trust know myself. Right. I can't trust myself. That was yes. the big, you know, the, the degree to which alcohol erodes mm. self-trust mm. is, it's just not okay. We deserve to be able to trust ourselves. If we can't trust ourselves, who else yeah. can we trust? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. No more carrying that shame around, Mm -hmm. you know, that feeling like, oh my gosh, I did it again. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. Have you experienced authentic freedom in your life? I know for me, not drinking alcohol feels like authentic freedom in my life. And I want to celebrate that. But maybe for you, authentic freedom is leaving corporate America. Maybe it's leaving a narcissistic relationship. Maybe it's not coloring your hair anymore. And that's authentic freedom. I know for me, that is too. So if you want to celebrate whatever it is that Authentic Freedom is for you, head over to AuthenticFreedomLifestyle.com and use the code MOCKTAILMOM to save 20%. Always free shipping. Again, that's AuthenticFreedomLifestyle.com. Use the code MOCKTAILMOM to save 20%. Hope to see you soon celebrating Authentic Freedom. Okay, so July 5th, 2018 was your last day one. And then during the pandemic, you did... So you you did coaching. You became yes, a coach. Yes, I became a coach. Yep. Certified coach. Yes. I love that. Yes. You're an excellent coach. Okay. So when somebody wants to work with you, like I know we've done, you know, we did our programs together. Mm-hmm. We're not doing it. We don't have anything right now live mm-hmm. and live and running, but who knows people, there might be something <laughs> coming. Stay tuned. Yep. Jen and I love working together. Yeah, we, so we're there, not, we can't stay away from each other. It just, there's yeah, just no we, way. We really can't. So like there's always, <laughs> there's going to be more opportunities. I have no doubt. I am not worried about that. But um, okay. So right now, so I'm super excited because you just rolled out. It's called. BYOB, which I love the name of your program. Thank you. Build your own break. Yes. Is that right? Yes, that's, what it that's correct. Build your own break. I love it. So, like a little take on like bring your own bottle. Mm-hmm. Very fun. BYOB. Mm-hmm. What is BYOB? And how would somebody work with oh, you? Oh, well, thank you for asking. Because I want Deb. people to. Know, I really want people to know. No, I mean, I yep. really like if you're if you're listening. So this is just a personal. Like I didn't. If you are looking for someone to hold your hand not just be a cheerleader, and I'm saying a coach, but like obviously your coach, but to really be in your corner, mm-hmm. you have met the right person Aww. today. So at least connect with Jen, follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is Jen Butler Coach, right? Yes, Jen Butler correct. Coach, that's yep. your Instagram handle. Make sure you're following her. But um, I want you to share about your programs, but I just want everybody to know, I, I am so thrilled for you to share this today because you really do help women. Oh my gosh. And you help women the who are struggling and- And I, like you said in the beginning, like you feel so alone, you feel like Mm -hmm. you're the only one. Mm -hmm. And so for somebody to be able to connect with you or connect with small groups that you're working with, you know, it is so life changing. Mm -hmm. It is so life changing. And so, um, okay. Oh, thank you. That's just my personal testimonial. I mean, I just, that's from the bottom of my heart. I I cannot speak highly enough of you. So, okay. All right. So BYOB, somebody, well, I love you too. So, Um, (laughs) okay. Enough with the love stuff. Enough. Let's get focused here. Everybody, you Um, need to get to know Jen. Here we go. What does she offer and how could you work with her? So, you know, I offer one-to-one coaching. You and I have done our booze break program live. And I created this course because I know the one-to-one coaching is a huge investment and can yep. be daunting to people. And I know that even our live program is an investment and can be daunting to people because someone may not be ready to get on a Zoom mm-hmm. with 10 or 20 other women and turn their camera on and be there as someone who is struggling with alcohol. That is a very hard thing to do. And yeah, I was thinking, you know, make yourself vulnerable. Exactly. Yeah. When I started my journey, yeah. it was literally an anonymous social media post mm-hmm. to a group of women that I didn't know. That was the yes. best I could do in that moment. 
of reaching out for help. Started. Yes. And so that's why I wanted to create this course to make the material from our booze break course available to people on their own time frame, at their own pace, and have it be for themselves. So it is the 31 days of content from our booze break program, but I I did some new videos and I kind of zhuzhed it up a little bit. Your content is phenomenal. And I've told you this. I mean, from minute one, I was like, you have to write a book. Yep. You have to write a book. So, okay, this is, all right. So the course is like, we're- Anyway. Yeah, the course is, we're rolling into that. Okay, (laughs) yes. yes. So the course is, Um, yes, I I love writing and I love putting together this course because I I really Mm -hmm. made it for me in 2017. I thought, what Mm. did I need to hear? What did I Mm. need to learn? And let me put all that in one place so that anyone else who's struggling with gray area drinking will have that at their fingertips. So it's 31 days, but it's self-paced. So if you need to take a couple days to digest one of the lessons, take your time with it. And then the reason why I call it BYOB, build your own break, is that it's customizable. So you can add, once you purchase the course, you can add one-to-one coaching if you want that extra support with me. You can also add just email and text support from me. Oh, um, wow. And then you can add, the, my other add-on right now is a one, one-time one goal-setting session. So if someone says, you know, okay, I'm going to stay alcohol-free for the duration of this program, but I'd also like to work on a fitness mm-hmm. goal, or I also have this project I'm working on, and I really want to be able to complete that during this alcohol-free time, we can sit down for an hour and map out how to get you there. So those are my current uh, customizations, but there will be more in the future, including maybe some mocktails. We'll see. (laughs) Maybe some mocktails, people. We'll see. (laughs) Yes. We like to drink while we're not drinking. Exactly. For sure. sure. I love that. Yeah. And that you have an add-on, like even if it's just a one hour and it can be a goal about other things. Because sometimes we feel so like, I know, I mean, for most women, I think like we're always taking care of other people or, you know, it's hard to, to prioritize our own goals. And sometimes just having that sitting down with you and clearing the head clutter yes. of like, okay, this is what I want to be working on right now. When I did, I did a live with Jolene Park and I know yes, you love Jolene love Park. Her. She's the one who, yes. you know, he, you know, originated the whole term gray area yep. drinking. When I did a live with her, I remember she was saying, we were talking about something where she, and she asks us on her podcast, you know, what is one thing you're not doing right now that you wish you were doing? Yeah. And so like that hour with you is like a time where somebody can really sit down, like what is that goal maybe that they haven't worked on, that Mm -hmm. they wanted to be working Mm -hmm. on, that they can, you know, really accomplish and tackle. Yeah, take advantage of the fact that you're going to have a clearer mind from not drinking. You're going to be sleeping better, so you'll have more energy. Really make the most of this time. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Invest in yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I love that it's self-paced. So you can, if you are like, okay, I want to get through it in 10 days, you can. Yes. If you want to just like, fly through con- and your content is so good. I mean, and then you have it, you can relist, you can, you know, reread the, the mm-hmm. emails and stuff. And mm-hmm. so um, I think that's so excellent. So, and then there's videos too that go with it. Is that right? Yes. So there's some videos. of the lessons have videos okay. either of me or videos that I just yeah. recommend from YouTube of Perfect. some of my, some of my people, um, videos favorites. that I found yes. inspiring early on in my journey. So yeah, yeah. yeah, and they and there are journal pages and worksheets and all that good stuff. So you can basically That's create awesome. your own workbook with all the material. And as you said, and you have the experience of doing our booze break program multiple times. So you know that you do it. You do a journal prompt, you know, and then you do it again a few months later, and you're writing different stuff because we're constantly evolving through this journey. So once you yeah. purchase this course, the one time you have that material, and you can always go back to it and do the That's exercises awesome. again and again. That's so awesome. I'm so proud of you, Jen, for doing this oh, and for you. having something that's evergreen, you know, something that's available. So like if you're not, you know, if we are not doing something, you know, that month or whatever, yep. there is something available exactly. people can plug into. And I just, I can't encourage people enough that, um, you know, if you are struggling or just want to, just want to like refresh your yeah. commitment to yes, being alcohol exactly. free. Refresh you know, your knowledge, just, you right? Yeah. It's very, yeah, it it's easy to, to day plateau one. during this journey yeah. and to start to feel a little down when it, when it starts to feel like it's, not as much fun to have this material to go back to and to remind yeah. yourself that this is not a life sentence. This is not a punishment. This is a privilege to live totally. alcohol free or to explore your sober curiosity. Totally. Totally. To kind of shore up the, the yes. commitment, you know, because sometimes it's like, well, maybe again, you know, it's like that, that little voice sometimes like maybe I'd be okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's okay. Mm-hmm. And maybe, you know what, for some, I'm not, no judge on anybody, yeah. but like for me, I know like I need to keep <laughs> the blinders on. Yep. I have to keep shored up because otherwise I will be back off to the races. Yep. Um, yes. Okay. So, um, 
I do want to talk about like what you drink when you're not drinking. Yeah. Is that okay if we switch gears a little yes. bit? And fun what stuff. are you drinking? I yes, I love, <laughs> okay, yes. Because, and I, I always talk about the fun stuff. And there is, you know, I, I want to be clear, like there's hard things in life. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, being alcohol free is not all fun. I do love the fun side of mm-hmm. it. I think I bring mm-hmm. that. But, you know, sometimes there's hard things in life. So yep. um, I want people to know you can get through really hard things yes. without alcohol. You don't, don't have yes. to have it. And because but, you're not drinking, you can fully enjoy the good things. So true. You know, so that's true. what's, yeah. I mean, I think that we don't talk about that often enough, how we, yeah. we talk about, you know, okay, when you're not drinking and then you, you go through something really hard, man, that really stinks to really have to feel your feelings. That is tough. But the flip side oh. is when something really wonderful happens, you also get to fully feel and absorb that goodness, that joy and carry totally. that with you. And that makes it so much easier to navigate the tough stuff. That's so true. So true. Because alcohol, it's so funny. I thought alcohol was like, I thought my wine was helping me numb the pain Mm -hmm. of life. I did not realize how much it was numbing the joy, yes. the good things. Yes. It was not, it, it, you, you know, can't it doesn't selectively discriminate. numb. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it, does, yeah, it doesn't exactly. discriminate. You can't sl- be like, just push the button on just the hard mm-hmm. stuff. No, it numbs everything, mm-hmm. you know? Okay, so, and your web, your website is Joy Enduring? Joy Enduring, yes. Joy Enduring. Tell everybody what does, and then we are going to get to the drinking stuff. <laughs> what does Joy Enduring, Joy Enduring? Yes. Joy I Enduring. Yes, and that is because being alcohol-free taught me, first and foremost, to enjoy the journey, you know, and to Mm -hmm. find those Mm -hmm. moments of joy and to really feel them. Because why else are we here if not to feel how wonderful life can be and to feel those little moments? And one one thing, I I know we got to go quick. We have so much to talk about, but I just want to say one thing that um, I've been working on with my current small group. I'm doing a small group uh, coaching program right now called Stay Brave. And one thing that I'm working on with them is we almost played, we almost made a game out of this. Find joy, not just in the life's mundane moments, but like, what's the tiniest moment where you can find joy? You know, mm-hmm. is it when you turn on your car in the morning or is it when, what is it? The first sip of coffee, like what's the tiniest that. moment that I is actually that. joyful and then recognizing that. And then when that happens every day, feeling that joy, allowing yourself feeling to feel it. it. Feeling yeah. it and feeling that gratitude, right? Whether it's like turning on the coffee maker mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds so silly. I I feel like joy first thing in the morning. So, but like just going into my bathroom that has running water, yes. you know, like I am so grateful. Yes. I'm so grateful. Totally. You know, it's such a basic necessity. Yep. And, you know, it's I every time I turn it on, you know, there's water. Yep. So, yep. yes, I love that. Okay, finding joy in the tiniest, tiniest things. So that's yes, and allowing stay yourself to, brave. Because we can, you know, we can feel those things now because we're not yeah. waking up and stumbling into our bathroom feeling oh hungover gosh. and disgusting feeling with like, ourselves, right? Where is the Excedrin? And I'm dragging my shame into this bathroom. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, my I'm friend. So I'm so grateful. I've never once woken up and thought, gosh, wish I'd had a bottle yeah. of wine. <laughs> Really right. wish I had a monster hangover right now. <laughs> really wish. I really wish I could have just started this day off all wrong. <laughs> I mean, right? It just yeah, not so never much. gets old. <laughs> never gets old. Okay. So, all right. I guess let's say um, if you're out in a bar or mm-hmm. restaurant, you're out for dinner or something, is there a certain mocktail you'll look for on the menu or something you'll ask to, to drink? What do you like to drink mm-hmm. when you go out? I mean, it's so just simple. if I'm, if I'm in fancy. the mood for a mocktail, which I'm not always, sometimes yeah. it's just yeah. a club soda Same. with lime, right? But yep. if, if I'm in yep. the mood for a mocktail, I definitely love to do a virgin mojito. Oh, yeah, that is my delicious. favorite because it is still so flavorful. I don't miss the alcohol yeah. at all. I don't yep. even think, you know, it, it, cause it's so flavorful the way that it is. I love that yep. mint. Mm, so good. Yeah. Yep, that's so my go-to. Good. So good. Yeah. You cannot go wrong with it. You can't go wrong. And you would, you don't know, you could hand it to somebody and they wouldn't yeah. know there's no alcohol. Yeah. In it. I don't think, I, you know, if it's made right. Yep, it's made right. Exactly. Um, okay. So how about, okay. I do want to get into some rapid fire on what do you drink at home? Do you have a favorite non-alcoholic beer? Mm-hmm. I love athletic brewing. Okay. And yeah. there's really, I can't decide which one I love the most. I just, I think they are so good. So that is definitely my favorite, my favorite athletic. brand. Yeah. They're, yeah, yeah. And they're like the, I don't want to say OG because I guess it would be old duels, but um, they yeah. are definitely the big, big player on the market. Yes. They're and they deserve to be. Company. Yeah. They yeah. should be. I totally agree. Yeah. They were on the Inc. 500 list. So cool. And great. It's so cool. Great. It, it is so cool to see what's happening in the non alcoholic space. Yep. It's phenomenal. Yep. Um, okay. Do you drink non alcoholic um, wines? Occasionally you- I do. I'm still like oh, dipping yeah. my toes yeah. in. I- 
I feel like, yeah, this is new for you, right? Yeah, it is fairly yes. new for me. And I'll tell you why, yeah. because I was, I was very hesitant about NA wines. I'm being totally honest here because I was afraid that they would make me want to drink real wine. And so I then, stayed away from them for a long time, a reason, which some yep, people, you know, exactly. And some yep. people need to do. Yep. And finally I got far enough along. And I think the industry also was like making major strides. And, and I remember you had said, you know, some of these wines are actually like, they're very good. And so I decided to try and I'm so happy to say, I love Giesen. That's my favorite brand. The Giesen okay. Sauvignon Blanc is, is that, is that <laughs> there you go, this right is, behind I you. Have, I have a Giesen, I think Rosé is right behind yep. me. Yes, but Giesen is, so yes, I, top of my list there. And what I love about it is that I have one glass and my my fears have not come to pass. It does not make oh. me want more. It does, I, I, I don't drink the whole bottle. Like I just, it's just a nice, it just tastes really good. And and same Tastes thing with good. athletic brewing. I thought, well, is this going to make me want the whole six pack? No, I have one. Sometimes I don't even finish one, which never That's happened great. with alcohol. I always finished whatever I was drinking, and so I love oh, these yeah. NA options because they keep life interesting. They, you know, it's just fun to have something different, um, and they don't trigger me the way that I feared that they would. They don't trigger me at all. Oh, that's good to know. That's really good to know. And to also encourage people, like if it is going to be a trigger, or you're worried about being a trigger, yep. like definitely stay away yeah. from it. It's okay not to drink mocktails. Absolutely. It's okay not to drink non-alcoholic beers. Yep. Drink whatever you want. You know, for me, from minute one, it has helped me stay on track. Yes. You know, it's helped me to have, you know, a non-alcoholic cocktail or, or alcohol-free wine. Yep. And they have gotten better, so much better. So much just better. Just two and right? a half years, mm-hmm. just, in, just in the two Incredible. years. I mean, it's just I, I like, it's all I for you, like I just got It's all for you. I got you, on a rocket ship and I'm so excited. Yep. Yep. You know, it's, it's so fun. There's so many good things it's, to drink. It's really and amazing. Fun, it's really amazing. It's and that's phenomenal. why I'm glad that you are here to help Thank show you. us what's available and what's possible because I can't keep, Even I like can't keep track of it all. I'm the welcome mat. I'm you not, are, like, I don't I have it. a brand. Like I don't have a, I don't have a can I'm selling or, you know, of my own stuff or anything, but I just feel like I'm just like the welcome mat. Like, come on in. It's fun yes. in here. There's good things to drink, you know? Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> just have a good time. Yes. And, and, it, and, and again, if it's a trigger, then don't drink them. Yeah. Don't, 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 you know, just whatever, whatever works for mm-hmm. you. So, mm-hmm. um, Okay. Any um, last advice maybe you would give to somebody who's maybe sober curious? Mm-hmm. I know obviously, well, my advice would be sign up for Jen's <laughs> BYOB, but um, any, like, yeah, just a, yeah. maybe a tip or what's some advice you'd give to somebody maybe who's really just Even before maybe signing on Instagram. up for BYOB, yeah. which yes, I would also give that advice. But even before that, yeah. listen to that inner voice that you have. That inner mm-hmm. voice that's saying, I think this is a problem or- Mm. I'm out of control, or this is not mm. as fun as it used to be. Listen to her. Mm. Just listen. And from there, decide how you want to deal with it. And maybe it's just following a few sober Instagram accounts and yep. just dipping your toe in that way and getting to know people yep. in this space. Maybe it's reading a Quitlet book. One book. Yeah. When I my first book that I ordered, I ordered it on my Kindle because I was too embarrassed to have the book on my nightstand. I remember you saying that's that. okay. I remember you put saying it on that. your Kindle. No okay. one has to know, but just okay. listen and and trust yourself that if your inner voice is telling you that something needs to change, trust that, and then sign that's up for my course. Good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then second, and then number two. Please do no, but that is such great advice because you know, I mean, I can look back and it's like you know, I think oh, December thirty first, twenty twenty was my first day alcohol free, mm-hmm. but that little voice, I had been hearing that voice for, well, for probably years, yeah, but same. I mean, really the voice kept getting louder and yeah. louder and louder, but it had been a very quiet voice for years. Mm-hmm. And then I started following sober, you know, accounts, following them, just watching people. And yeah, but I was like you, like I would have, well, I'm not a reader like you, <laughs> you, but with all those books behind you there, <laughs> but you know, like you in the sense, like I would have put the book on my Kindle. Yeah. There's no yeah. way I would have put a quitlet yeah. book on my bedside yeah. table. Like I, I would have been I, I wasn't ready for anybody to know that I was thinking about evaluating my relationship yep. with alcohol. And that's okay. And that's okay. Yep. And that's okay. Yep. We want everybody to know that is okay. Nobody needs to know and just listen. I mm-hmm. love that advice. That's wonderful, Jen. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm so, so glad we got to do this today. Me I too. cannot wait for people to get to know you 
And uh, make sure everybody you are following, Jen, if you're on Instagram, um, Jen Butler Coach. Yes. Or check out her website, Joy Enduring, I-N-D-U-R-I-N-G. I'll put that in the show notes for anybody who wants to find you. Not who wants to. You better find her. <laughs> <laughs> if not, why not? Um, so anyway, big time cheers to everybody for tuning in today. And I'm just so grateful. The fun is not over. There are still good things to drink. Yes. Um, when you are not drinking. So big time cheers to you. Big time cheers to Kentucky. you, Deb. Okay. Love you, my Love friend. You. Love you. Big time cheers to you for tuning in to the Thriving Alcohol Free Podcast. I hope you will take something from today's episode and make one small change that will help you to thrive and have fun in life without alcohol. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social, send up a flare, or leave a rating and a review. I am cheering for you as you discover the world of non-alcoholic drinks and as you journey towards authentic freedom. See you in the next episode.